Hey everybody and welcome back. If you're just getting here, this is Tattoo Collectibles and I'm your host Eric. Today on the show we've got some, uh, some pretty cool things in the mail for you. Some of them I've been trying to get most of my career. So without too much uh, further, oh by the way, if you're, if you're enjoying these videos, uh, show us how much you're enjoying them by just hitting that like and subscribe button. It won't take you a second. It's going to mean the world to us. So, please hit that like and subscribe button. So, anyway, we're going to flip it over to What's in the Mail, Eric, because he is biting at the bit this week. Check this out. What's in the Mail? Ooh-wee! <laughs> He's right. I am biting at the bit. And I'll tell you what's in the mail. There's some machines in the mail this week. So, this machine, for all of those of you out there that know what that means, we'll get to that in a minute. But first, <laughs> I got this little package. Okay, so I've got the, um, I've got a miniature, uh, uh, who, who made it? Titchener? Ackers, Ron Ackers. I got a Ron Ackers, <laughs> Ron Acker's mini machine. I got a couple other mini machines. Now, a lot of these mini machines originally came as um, jewelry. They wanted you to hang that big heavy some bitch around your neck. Now, this is one of the first ones that I've gotten that actually has the little uh, the little post on the back, so you could put uh, put one through it. Uh, that just cracks me up, man. Chances are this little thing will turn right on if you hit it up with some power. Uh, it's, I mean, they're made just like real tattoo machines. Let's see, let's see how authentic we got here. Oh, yep, even the tube by screw moves, but the tube will not come out. So that's okay. I, it's not like I'm gonna uh, be tattooing with this a bunch. Man, even the little, even the little springs on the back. I mean, these things just crack me up. That's why I ordered this one. I did not give hardly anything for this one. But here's the deal. If I want to frame something up, I've got to have a couple, two or three of them at least. So this, this will go into my, uh, my mini machines collection. Now, these chances are these aren't going to be worth a whole bunch. They're, uh, they're from uh, overseas somewhere. I, I believe this one says, uh, let me get my spectacles out here. I believe this one says Japan on the bottom. Yeah, it says Japan on the bottom, which um, that's still pretty cool. Uh, does it say Japan? Yeah. Anyway. And that's where it came from. It came from overseas. It was it was pretty cheap, um, but like so so many other things you see on this show, man. I just sometimes I like the little crazy things just because it says tattoo on it or whatever. Now this one is from um, Alpine, California. I believe I know what this is, but let's open it. And I know some of you out there are thinking, "Where's your Mr. Domo Tennessee fighting knife? I left it at home today." If you can believe that, knew I was coming up here to film. And so now I got to use this rancid piece of crap. Might as well open them with my teeth. <laughs> so let's see. Get all the stuff off that. Alrighty, I'm just gonna rip right into this one. And yeah, that. Yep. So years ago, uh, I apprenticed under a gentleman who was from Louisville, Kentucky. He worked with a guy named Boda. Boda, uh, he was pretty awesome from what I hear. Every story I've heard about Boda, uh, with the exception of a few, uh, he was pretty chill, pretty laid back dude. So he built these machines uh, and marketed them through uh, Kingpin. You can get them through Kingpin. Uh, and I always wanted one because it said Louisville on it. Now this one, you can almost tell the date of one of these by what it says on the side. So this one on the side says uh, Slowtown, 
Uh, I'm not sure why he changed putting the names on there like that. But I bought this one because it was a, it was a bit of nostalgia. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to frame that up and I'll put a Boda card with it. I'll just give him a call. You know, he's just down in Louisville. And uh, this was from 2010. So I called down there. I called a Tattoo Charlie's is where he worked. Uh, and they were like, you know, Boda died a few years back. And it just, it really hit home for me that I need to pick up the phone more often and call some of these guys. Some of these guys that I've enjoyed their work or enjoy their machines or what have you, I need to let them know. Uh, and if I want to know anything from them, I need to ask them, you know? So when I got this one, I got this one, like I said, for nostalgia's sake, because it was, you know, I'm from uh, near Louisville and uh, this was kind of near and dear to my heart. But this one, man, this one has been well loved and used the crap out of. Now, it's got a little a little rust on it, a little pitting in the top. It's got a little rust on the side. Um, I think I'm gonna do a whole segment about restoring this machine back to its uh, former glory. Uh, yeah, you can tell it's been dropped and dinged a little bit here and there. I'm gonna fix all that. If you all wanna see me do that, comment down below and say, we wanna see you restore one and we will take this SOB apart and we will restore it. If you'd rather see it kept as it is, comment about that too. We're gonna to do one or the other. Uh, the One of the upcoming machine heads, you'll hear how this thing runs. And I've never owned a Boda machine but I have heard that they run like a scalded pack of dogs. So we're gonna see on this one, uh, probably uh, maybe today, maybe later on today. What do you think, later on today? Yeah, we'll do that boat today, okay? Right, yeah, later on today, so that's, uh, that's what we'll do. Uh, alrighty, we're gonna set that one down. Man, I love that machine. Now, I recently, uh, come to the real, realization that I am getting up there in years. And I wanted to own an Aaron Kane, like a, like I've got an Aaron Kane outliner, a, a production model that I use all the time. And I love it. It's good for like little groupings. But if you've ever been to Kane Forge, at Kane Forge, C-A-I-N-F-O-R-G-E on Insta, you will see some of these beautiful works of art that this man makes that also tattoo people. Now, are they expensive? Yes. Uh, are they one of a kind? Yes. You will never see the same machine twice on there. You may see the same style, but you will never see the same mach same machine twice. Oh, I miss Mr. Domo's knife, by the way. That'll be in the next several episodes because I am up here. We do episodes like, uh, cool. We do a bunch of episodes in a row when we film. So you'll have to put up with that piece of crap for a couple days here, Mr. Dumbo, and I am sorry. So we've got a, a little note in here. It says, thanks for buying one of my machines. I hope your new machine serves you well for the rest of your career. A couple things that you should know. Uh, all of my machines are made by me personally, so availability is not always consistent. Oh, well, I guess it is. So he sends a bunch of um, things that he recommends, uh, like uh, using uh, paper or tape to snug your needle bar to the armature bar. Uh, instead of a rubber grommet, um, uh, things of that nature. But it, it's a it's a whole little thing there. Um, and then at the bottom it just says, uh, "Thanks a bunch. Good luck, Aaron Kane." So you gotta you get an official Aaron Kane autograph every time you get one of these, which I think is very cool. Now I contacted him and I told him I was like, "Look, I'm getting up there in years, and I want one of your machines before I die." Uh, and <laughs> He comments back, he's like, how old are you, brother? And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pushing, yeah, I'm over 50. Uh, I'll be 53 this year. 
And he says, that's close to my age. And he says, and I am not anywhere near the end of my career. He goes, and neither are you. That's good to hear, Aaron. Thank you so much. Uh, and I asked him if he could uh, include some business cards. Um, he said he hasn't printed business cards in 20 years. 20 years. Now, business cards, you... Oh, I'm sorry. I just I just lifted the cover and saw this machine, and uh, I know I was talking about business cards. I just totally lost my train of thought there for two seconds. This machine is so beautiful. I'll show you in a second. It, he said he hadn't printed business cards in 20 years. Now, business cards are mainly made to get your name out and you know uh, let people know how to contact you. When you are so successful that you don't need to print them for 20 years. Good on you, brother. So these are some of his older cards. Now they are, uh, I don't know if this is even gonna pick up real well on film. Uh, if you can see that, the, the name down there, it's printed on there. And then he sent me a couple of them and they're, they're both signed by him in marker, uh, which that is super cool. If, uh, if and when I frame this machine, I'm gonna put those right back in the box. Uh, I will have a card to put with it. Now, for the main event. Good golly, Miss Molly. So, this is a, um, it's a bulldog. And it's gorgeous. So, that is fully mecked. 100% all over this machine. And, like, I'm sure this doesn't do it justice. It doesn't weigh... I mean, it doesn't weigh hardly anything. It's even mecked inside and like underneath, underneath where nobody's ever gonna see it except for the artist that bought it. Uh, even inside the swing arm is done. So kudos, Mr. Kane, like Jiminy Christmas. So this is a, uh, a super light uh, aluminum frame. And he even mecked like the A bar and the yoke in there, like that, all that stuff in there has been meticulously carved out. I, I'm, I'm past words with this. Like this is, this is a beautiful machine. Uh, now let's get to the, the not so beautiful, but well, I get it's, I paid a bunch of money for this. Let me, let me put it that way. It's, uh, his his uh, machines are not cheap. The custom machines are not cheap, nor should they be. He probably put, I, I don't know, I don't even know how many hours he would put into this to make it look like this. Like, this is a gorgeous piece of art. But it's a gorgeous piece of art that allows me to create gorgeous pieces of art. So... Uh, I didn't really, uh, like, obviously I didn't balk at the price. I bought it. Um, but before you go jumping in to the deep end on these, they are pricey. Uh, get what you pay for. I'll tell you that. I, that's what I've always thought uh, when it comes to uh, the equipment that I used to earn a living with. You get what you pay for. And uh, this will be on an upcoming episode of Machine Heads in case you want to hear how this thing runs. Uh, I know I want to hear how this thing runs. I'm pretty jazzed about it. Uh, he does the, it's, it's got the typical, uh, U S quarter, um, uh, saddle, uh, cover on it. I, I just love this thing. It's got tiny little coins everywhere. He uses the, um, steel pennies from the, uh, from the forties to do his, uh, tube vice tightener. And, uh, man, that's just cool. Cool as cool can get. So that is what we had for you today on machine heads. I'm going to be sure and put all this back, uh, back how it was, um, on machine. Head. Let me just start that all over again. Cause this machine's got me all flustered. All right. So that, that's what we had for you today. That machine got me a little flustered, man. I probably forgot what I was talking about there for a minute. I forgot you good people were here. So, so, uh, but that's what we had in the mail for you today. Um, I mean, what an awesome day. 
So I'm gonna flip it back over to announcer Eric because I am beside myself and I wanna go play with these machines. So I'm gonna turn it back over to him. He'll let you know what's coming up. All right, so what a cool day, huh? Um, man, I'm gonna have to, to go back there with him in a second and see that Aaron Kane machine. It looks pretty damn cool. So, uh, um, he just, he got me distracted. Now he's so excited, he got me distracted about things. So, without too much further from me, here's a brand new Machine Heads, and I believe you're gonna see that Boda, that beautiful Boda machine right now. So check this out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Machine Heads. So today we are doing this beautiful Soba machine. Now, like I was saying in the show, like, I love this machine. Like this one, this one is the poo, man. And back in the day, I'd have killed to have this machine. I just, back in the day, I couldn't afford it, you know? Now, all these years later, let's see how she sounds. That doesn't sound bad at all. It's a little tinny sounding, but it's running pretty low voltage. Now, he, uh, let's see how close it is. I could probably end up shimming that bottom coil just a little bit and have it working a lot, a lot better than it does. Um, I think this is gonna be the one that we take apart and I show you how to, to completely redo uh, a machine like this little surface rust on here. I don't know if that picks up on camera or not But it's a little rusty and he always put like I like his little details uh, He always signed them and then he always like underneath the um, The screw for the vice there's always like a little I don't know if you can see it but a little uh, hangman's noose under there and then he normally did like spider webs on the side. Now these weren't like engraved in, they were more, uh, he probably took some kind of metal scribe and scribed them in. Uh, they're super cool though. And then uh, on the side of this one, it actually says Slow Town. Uh, I don't know if you can make that out, uh, but yeah, right there, Slow Town. And then it's dated 2010. Now, as far as collectability on this one, I'm gonna give it an eight. This is all that's ever gonna be made. Uh, the ones that are made now, that's it. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, Soba passed away, and and so we'll never we'll never get new ones from him of these. But man, that just that just sounds really good. Now this is definitely a uh, a liner. Um, I wonder if I can reset just a little here. See. He's got, I love the, uh, he's got a mini uh, thumb screw on the side for his contact point set, which I dig, man. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, I can probably put this in right, in, right in rotation. Let me tell you what. But uh, yeah, hear that? Oh, like it's got to hear. Let's turn it up a little bit. It gets a little radly as it goes up. But uh, yeah, man, that's a that's a definitely a good machine. Now these are eight wrap coils. You can tell because they're kind of they're kind of slim. Um, it's got just a normal normal armature bar on it. Nothing fancy. Uh, it's cut down into the first screw well uh, to keep it from cracking. I'm assuming that's why I did that. To keep it from cracking. Uh, it's brazed. It's a brazed together model. Uh, I think it's brazed with bronze. Like I said, a collectability, I'll give it an eight. Uh, usability, I don't know yet. Uh, it sounds good. I'd say this is probably gonna be a five or six before I do anything to it. Now, once I take it apart and completely rebuild it, well, then it's gonna run a hell of a lot better, I guarantee you that. But what I'm gonna try to do is keep everything just as, as authentic on it as, as I can. Mainly what I wanna do is I wanna break it down and clean it. You know, I've got some stuff uh, and um, like the, if you can see right there, I don't know if you can see it on, on camera, right there, there's a little scratch. There's a little dent down in the bottom one there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off that black heat, 
uh, heat shrink that he put on it and go back and reheat shrink it with black again. Um, and then we're gonna use some, some rust remover on it and then, uh, then I'll show you how to get them black again. It's, it's an easy thing, but not everybody knows how. So we'll be, we'll be doing all that. Um, if you can find one of these out there, pop on it. It's definitely worth having. So hopefully you dug that. Uh, check me out in the future. I'm gonna be doing some other machines. So till we meet again. All right, so that's what we had for you today. I'm, uh, I'm here hoping that you enjoyed it and I hope you continue to enjoy these. We really love making them and uh, we'll continue. We've heard from a bunch of you here. I know it's been a, a few uh, weeks. I haven't been real consistent the last few weeks. I've been getting all this together and there is a special event coming up that we're getting ready for. It's the, um, the Tattoo Historical Society meeting. So if, if you collect things like this, this meeting is definitely for you. It happens in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. It's coming up in October. Check out the Facebook page for the Tattoo Historical Society and they'll fill you all in on it. Uh, that's what we had for you today though. So hopefully we, uh, uh, you learned something you didn't know or saw something you had never seen. And um, so until I see you next time, I want you to do a few things for me. I want y'all to stay safe. I want y'all to be cool to each other. And I want you all to keep on collecting. We'll see you next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and please hit the subscribe button down below and check out these videos. We worked real hard on these too and I think if you enjoyed this one, you'll enjoy those too.